So thank you. I think we've, um, to sum up this first part of the podcast, we talked about the importance of understanding the local context much better and integrating with the local population. We've talked about what stabilization means and that there is a wide uh, range of different interpretations of, of what stabilization can and, and could or should mean. And we've also talked about the coup epidemics and how that has changed the political environment. And we've talked about how terrorist groups have expanded over the past decade in spite of um, the rather large Western military presence in the region. We talked a little bit about the Western presence in the Sahel uh, region and how it has not really lived up to the expectations of the local population and probably not either um, for the expectations from the European or the Western population so far. Um, one, of the, one of the points that have been highlighted in many reports and by analysts is the lack of strategic communication, both towards the local population, but also back towards um, the host nations. Um, how do you see this point, Delina? Mm. You mentioned um, either Yunina or, or Sedik uh, earlier, you, you were talking about uh, Serval and uh, the, 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 um, the beginning of Serval, what the French mission uh, that was launched in 2012, I believe, um, what that mission meant and how, how was that mission successful? Um, and I think the... I mean, the, the, the situation with Barkhane, and after 10 years of Barkhane, I suppose we can now reflect on what the problems with it were and how not to make the same mistakes again in terms of communication, um, is that Serval was a consequential progressive liberation of villages that was very well communicated daily to the Malian public and to European publics and the French public especially. So daily there were... There were information on which village Serval had liberated um, from, from a number of armed groups uh, and how people were, were reacting to it. With Barkhane, the situation was and is still much more, much murkier, is much more complicated to, to understand how the mission is functioning. Um, the, the only thing that I believe people see, um, not just in Yemen, but of course in, in border areas, in, in more remote villages, is a number of troops coming every so often to do CIMIC, so civilian military cooperation, every so often, you know, they they build a well or they hand in flour um, or, you know, food items. Um, and this is all that people see. Um, and then the things that people hear is that weapons are being delivered daily. There is a presence of American armed drones in the north. Um, France has huge aerial power, and yet people keep dying. And so they just wonder, I mean, everyone is here with all this manpower and technology and money, and we keep dying. Why is that happening? What, what is, and, and no one, European forces, the French, the Nigerians themselves, uh, in terms of government, struggle to communicate why it is so hard to actually protect these populations in border areas. That should be done better. Mm -hmm. So better strategic communication, and we also know that Barkhane, at, at some point, they, their strategic communication was also communicating how many jihadists or how many violent extremist um, persons that were killed or eliminated or neutralized, whatever word you want to use, and um, which didn't really perhaps send the message that was uh, expected and wanted by the local population, because there were, yeah. of course, many other aspects, as you said, by CIMIC operations that were hardly known outside of the village where they were conducted. And um, you also talked about uh, the, the strong technological presence uh, of weapons, of uh, different types of drones and so on. But the European states up until very recently have not been able to provide any lethal equipment until very recently when we had um, the European Peace Facility, which is a new instrument um, from which the European states can actually provide lethal equipment to their partners 